commentary on the second order ODE uh, exercises on page 62, 63. So what's very important to be able to do in the first instance is to be able to write a uh, second order as two first orders. And you'll need that if you're doing boundary value problems as well. Um, so in all these, um, you might have seen this in earlier videos, you let the first derivative be um, a, a new variable v. Then you can differentiate both sides and you get the second derivative of your function in this case y, is the first derivative of your new variable v. And then what you can do is you can write your differential equation in terms of v. So for example, the second derivative is v dashed. So you put that there. Um, your first derivative is v. So we put that there, you have v squared. And then you have the rest of it, minus 2y equal to 3. And then what you can do, you solve for v dashed. So here, I'm, what am I doing? I'm taking away v squared, I'm adding 2y, and I end up uh, with the following. y dashed is v, and then v dashed, well, we just found that. You also have the initial conditions. y of 0 is 1 is easy, and then uh, v of 0, because v is the derivative, v of 0 is 0. So there's a number of examples here that are kind of similar. Um, so... Again, the second one, I think it's in the green square there. So introduce a new variable v equal to the first derivative, differentiate both sides, then write your differential equation in terms of v. I guess, how do I do that? Well, this is dv dx, and dy dx is v by definition. So I get dv dx is equal to 2v, and then I'm, I'm away with it. Because I have dy dx is equal to v, that's one differential equation, and then dv dx gives you the other one. And here in question b, it said when x equal to 0, y is 0, that's okay, so y of 0 is 0, and then dy dx is the same as v, so I have v of 0 is 1. Okay, and a similar story here, um, just let me introduce a new variable. In general, the new variable doesn't have to mean anything here. S is probably displacement, and so V is probably velocity. Differentiate both sides with respect to T. You get to here. Rewrite your differential equation in terms of V. So the second derivative of S is dV dt. So this is dV dt is equal to 6. Okay. Yes, I'm recording. Uh, and another example there. Okay. And another example here. And another example here. Down to Monic Oscillator. Yeah, so this would have been in maybe lab, I'm going to say 4. So let introduce a new variable v to be dx dt. Differentiate both sides and then write the differential equation in terms of v. The second derivative is dv dt. The first derivative is v and then solve that thing, uh, that little equation for dv dt, which we did. And um, always remember, the, the when you let the first derivative be v, that's your other equation. Okay, I think there's just the units around there. That should be just meters. Similar story here. So write it as two first orders, and then this was a Heinz method. Okay, now this is a second order, so you write as two first orders. And so what's going on here, you've got uh, two Euler methods, because there's two differential equations, so you need two predictors. Okay. Um, we have initial values of x and v. They're all here. There is no initial predictors. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an Euler predictors, two Euler predictors to get these, and then you'll do two Heinz methods to get these. After that, Euler predictors to get these two Heinz two Euler predictors two Heinz methods and then it turns out you're actually like this you are asked to approximate x of 0.3 that'll be your x3 and if you look at x3 what comes into it is the previous x which is x2 and then you average the two slopes the slope of x is v so you just need v2 and v3 predictor you don't actually need the other ones um, it's obviously not wrong to calculate them, you just don't need them. Okay, um, so let's see this go. So first of all, we have our two predictors, and they jump off 
the previous you notice there's no initial x uh, excuse me there's no initial predictors because the whole time the predictors jump off the previous x and v these predictors jump off the previous x and v this predictor jumps off the previous uh, x and v so that's why um there's no initial predictors because the x predictor jumps off the previous x and the v predictor jumps off the previous v okay the slope of x is given by v so the slope of x is the previous v which was one and the slope of v is minus 4v minus 3x and it uses the previous v and the previous x the step size in both cases should be in the question it was 0.1 you don't need the table but it helps you kind of look ahead then we are using um, Heinz method. So Heinz method says you calculate your predictor and then your next value is previous plus step size and then you average two slopes. Now one thing that might be easier, certainly in programming and perhaps even here, is rather than dividing the two slopes by two, you can divide the step size by two. Now mathematically it kind of gives you, it's the same thing. It does give you the kind of the wrong idea. You're not halving the step size you're averaging the slopes but if you're kind of know what you're doing it's it's a good idea so that's what this was about um so anyway so the the x's so this jumps off the previous x and v and this jumps off the previous x and v and of course both of them take into account the predicted x and v so um let's see previous x here is zero previous v is one that's all good step size are fine and i'm doing divided by two the slope of x is v, and I should do current v, which is 1, plus predicted v. So the current v, or the previous v, is here, and the predicted v is here. And they're the things I'm averaging to get my uh, x1. Okay, And then v is the previous v, which is 1 plus step size, and then we're averaging two slopes. The slope of v is minus 4v minus 3x. So there, that's the current slash previous, and this is the, the next in the sense of predicted. So we got the previous v1, the previous x0 in, in that previous slash current slope, and then the predicted one, you use the two predicted values, the 0.1 and the 0 0.6. And we get whatever we get. Now again, we do more two more predictors, and again, the predictors do not jump off the previous predictors. You do not use 0.1, that's wrong. Use the previous x, which is 0 0.08. So the predictors don't actually give you an Euler method. They're jumping, they're just a rough thing. Um, and again, the slope, it should be the previous slope, and you use not the previous predictor, but the previous v like that and then similar story with the v and then uh, of course for x2 you average the two slopes the slope of x as we saw up here is just v so you're averaging two v's the previous v and the predicted v there's the predicted v there and then for dvdt you got this minus 4v minus 3x the previous here slash current and the predicted next here and we average those out okay and then i think we didn't actually need x3 predicted but i calculated it. this was v3 predicted this was needed and then finally x3 is the previous x which is x2 step size and then the two slopes the previous v which is the 0.423 that went there and then the predicted next v that thing and we got a final answer okay Another example here, van der Poel. So this is just not looking for Heinz method, just Euler's method. So things will be a little bit easier in terms of what we're looking at. Um, we have our initial story time equal to zero, where x was zero and v was zero. Now we haven't got v really until we do let dx dt equal v. Okay. Um, we might just, this is probably an important one for writing as two first orders. So let dx dt be v. 
So you have to let the derivative be v, and here the v is actually velocity. Differentiate both sides with respect to t. Derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative. Derivative of v is dv dt. And now take these and write this thing in terms of v. So we have the second derivative is dv dt. That's there. We have 2 times 1. Now x of t is just the same thing as x. So that's why that's just x there. And then dx dt is the same as v. And then we've got a, a, a spare x lying around. And solve that for dv dt. Just take away some stuff. And you end up with this. Um, so once we have it written as two first orders, we're ready to go and um, do our two Euler methods. Now, step size of point 0.1 to approximate x of point 0.2. So step size of point 0.1, point 0.1. And so our x approximation at point 2 is x2. So in fact, we don't have to find uh, v2. This is quite quick. So previous x is 0. Previous v is 1. Step size is point 0.1 in both cases. The derivative of x is v. Previous v is 1. Derivative of v is this. So, uh, so you know, Euler method says uh, next is previous plus step size times previous slope, and the slope is the derivative. And this is the previous slope, so it uses the previous x and previous v. And then um, just x2, previous x is 0.1, plus step size times previous slope. The slope of x is v, so use the previous v, so nice and quick. Uh, this one... Poins method again, but it's just going to point two. So again, we go from the initial situation to the predictors, and then the initial now, as we're looking at point one, is kind of classed as uh, previous slash current. So you combine the previous slash current and the predicted next to come up with these approximations, and we just have to go to x two. And in fact, you only need v two predictor, um, because. Uh, x two predictor doesn't come into the slope of x. So again, write as two first orders. So we have the two predictors here. Um, then we have the two Hines method. And then I think we just need a V predictor. So again, so it jumps off, not the previous predictor, not that. It jumps off the previous V, which is this. Um, plus step size and then the slope of v is given up here minus v minus 6x minus v minus 6x and it jumps out. I use the previous v and the previous x um, and then finally uh, x previous x 0.97 there you go plus step size and then average two slopes the previous slope the slope of x is v so it's previous v plus predicted v and they're the two things that are average and we get our our final answer okay and this one is actually handy enough um looks a bit funny just ds dt is v differentiate both sides you get two dv dt is one and you get in fact that dv dt has a, a constant it is a constant a half so the slope of v is a constant um euler it's saying the look yeah there's just a thing there um i think it's kind of saying that if you look at the derivative um, of s, the second derivative is a constant, so it's not zero, so Euler method will not give you the correct answer, but I think Hoyne does. So Hoyne actually gives you the second, uh, excuse me, gives you the, how do we say, um, the exact answer, but that's neither here nor there really. So anyway, we get this and we do our Euler method, Euler method, how far are we going? We're going to three with a step size of one. So this is at one jump to, from x equal to zero, or t equal to zero, t equal to one, t equal to one to t equal to two, and then finally t equal to two to t equal to three. Another problem here. So this one now, um, the problem, say, if I'm doing this, is that v is no longer, say, velocity. It's just an abstract thing, dy dx. Differentiate both sides with respect to x. 
derivative, first derivative is second derivative, derivative v is dv dx, and then rewrite your differential equation in terms of v. The second derivative is dv dx, uh, is equal to x plus your first derivative is v, so you got dv dx there. Okay, so dy dx is v, dv dx is x plus v, and this is another Euler's method. It is going to 1.5 in steps of 0.5, so we're going from 0 to 0.5 to 1 to 1.5. Uh, we have our initial y here. And v is the derivative of y, so we have our initial v here. That also goes there. And then we just do two Euler methods. Previous plus step size times slope. And here the, the slope of y is v, so that kind of is the same. So you're using this, this, then this feeds in here, this feeds in here. But the slope of v is given as x plus v. Uh, this is slightly harder than uh, maybe this is something a little bit different. So say to get the next v, you're using the previous point. Now what comes into the derivative of v is x plus v. So you're using, well I'll just put in the, the y even though it doesn't come into it. So the previous x is 0 and the previous v is minus 2. So you have to use here, when it says x, it's previous slope. So you have to use previous x. So you're here. So the previous x is 0. Uh, then when you get to here, and you're going to here, the previous x is 0 0.5. Uh, and I think that's uh, everything for us here. More down there, no.